so let's start switching in this switching today we will discuss about basic switch operation and mac address table creation how switch learns mac address and how it will use that mac address table to forward the packet okay now if i talk about switching switching is just a process to receive a packet on an interface and forward that packet out of another interface right this is called packet switching now when we perform switching at layer 2 packet switching at layer 2 then it is called you can say layer 2 switching and when we switch packets with the help of information provided at layer 3 like ip address it is called routing that is also a switching only packet switching right we are sending the packet received from one interface to another interface of the device right so packet switching means just forwarding the packet but if you are sending the packets based on layer 2 information it is called switching if you are forwarding the packets based on layer 3 attributes like ip addresses then it is called routing okay we will see that thing later now to perform switching at layer 2 we use layer 2 switches switches are also uh, come in layer 3 models right we can have layer 3 switches in the network to enable routing or to create communication between different networks using layer 3 switch we have some difference between layer 3 switch and router we will discuss about it later but for now in switching we are going to use switch and i told you about switch that switch is a layer 2 device which is used to create communication between same network users okay it takes forwarding decision based on destination mac address by performing lookup into mac address table switch creates mac address table dynamically so today we will see how switch creates mac address table by learning source mac address of the packet by learning source mac address of the packet now you know that whenever any endpoint will send the packet it requires some information like destination ip address and the destination mac address to whom you are going to send the packets okay for the pc to whom you are going to send the packets so here switch will also use that information to receive and forward the traffic to receive and forward the packet let's say this is a switch and switch is a is an appliance okay it is a machine we have different model number of switches okay like this switch are used to provide scalability in the network okay let's say you have this time you have uh, for example 50 users in your network but in upcoming time your when your network will grow then user count will be increased right so if the user count is increased and you want to connect more users more and more users with the network then you can use switches okay they will provide you scalability because switch contains multiple switch ports or interfaces which can be used to connect wired users right directly to the network and these switches are also used at access layer you can say mostly we use switches at access layer and distribution layer also but to connect the endpoints we use switches at access layer mostly these switches will be layer 2 switches okay and at distribution layer you can also connect layer 3 switches we mostly connect layer 3 switches at distribution layer okay so let's say in access layer there is a switch connected and with this switch multiple endpoints are connected okay now these endpoints should be connected in same network address should be assigned with same network ip addresses on them okay then they will be able to communicate with each other without any layer 3 device or without any third party router or something okay 
So if you want to connect more and more users in the network, you can use switch. They will provide you scalability. OK, and you can purchase switches with 8 ports, 12 port, 24 port, 16 port, 48 port, 64 port, OK, 90s, 90 ports. And if you want very high speed and high performance switches, then you can also use Nexus switches in the network. OK. Yeah, like if I talk about Cisco Catalyst switch, these switches will be used uh, at your access layer, core layer, distribution layer. It's up to you. Okay, according to the requirement, you can use them. Like Cisco 2960 X series switch is a layer three switch, which can be used at, at a distribution layer. Okay, mm -hmm. and we have 2960 switch, 2950 switch that can be used as layer two switch also. Okay. At access layer, we have 3750, 3850, 3650, 3550. Many switches, Cisco switches are available. Most of the, you can say the 3750 and uh, 3550, 3650, these switches are out of sale right now. You will find 3850 series switch in real time network, 4500 series switch, 6500 series switch. 65 is also, I think, end of sale now. Okay. Okay. You will find 2960. It is very popular. You will find in many of the networks 3850, 3750X switch. It is also it was also very popular. Okay. So these switches will have maximum multiple port numbers so that we can connect more and more users with the network. So let's say if I am going to connect some users with this switch and if I assign same network IP addresses on the users then they will be able to communicate because by default on a switch we have a single broadcast domain and all the switch ports are assigned in that broadcast domain okay so switch will take forwarding decision based on mac address table switch creates mac address table dynamically by learning source mac address of the endpoint from packet okay by default on switches, we have a broadcast domain called VLAN 1. Called VLAN 1. Okay. All the switch ports are assigned. in VLAN 1 by default. So they can communicate with each other if we configure same network IP addresses, OK? Now to communicate, let's say here we have this 10.1.1 IP, 10.1.1.2, 10.1.1.3. On this PC, we have MAC address A, MAC address B, and MAC address C. Now let's say we have just connected the endpoints and they have not communicated earlier. They are going to communicate for the first time. Then what will happen? This PT, this PC will create a packet. Let's say this is PC A or PC one. It will create a packet, and you know that we use ping command, right? Ping. What is the use of ping? Here you can write ping is called a packet internet gruffer. It is used to verify connectivity. This is the basic use of ping between two endpoints. Initiator sends ICMP echo request to the destination IP. And if destination IP is reachable, then it will send ICMP eco reply. ICMP is a layer three protocol, Internet Control Messaging Messaging Protocol. Okay. This is the protocol which will be used by ping utility to verify connectivity between 
two or more endpoints. Okay. Using ping, you can verify the connectivity. You can guess the operating system. Okay. You can get the information about TTL. You can get the information about ITT response time reporter, right? After uh, you can say what is the latency and all. Okay. After this, here, if I want to ping from PC1 to PC2, then this, this PC will create a packet, right? It will create a packet like this. It will put ICMP eco request, right? So this is ICMP packet and it will add source IP and destination IP when this PC will try to verify the connectivity with the PC. C you can say, OK, so it will put IP address 10.1.1. Why it is so small? This is ICMP. Here it will add an IP header in which it will include source IP 10.1.1. And destination IP 10112. This is PC C. And now it will add source MAC address. So PC1 will add its MAC address, but destination MAC address is unknown. Because when this PC will try to ping, first of all, it will check its local ARC cache, right? To find out the destination MAC address. If destination MAC address is not available in local ARC cache, then this packet cannot be sent it this packet will be on hold in buffer right and this pc will generate an arp request okay this pc will generate an arp request to find out the mac address for destination ip okay it will create an arp packet like this arp request in this ARP request, it will put sender IP address, sender MAC address. Okay. Sender IP address will be 10.1.1, sender MAC address will be A. Target IP address is 10.1.1.2, and target MAC address will be 000, means it is unknown. Okay. In this ARP, we will have source MAC address of PCA. And destination MAC address will be all F this one. Broadcast, right? Broadcast MAC address. This is your broadcast MAC address. Do you know about ARP? ARP is used to resolve MAC address for a known IP address. Okay. Whenever any PC tries to communicate with any other destination endpoint, it requires IP address and MAC address. Two things. Okay. IP address will be known because you know that to whom you are going to ping, right? You will ping 10.1.1.2. So IP address is known, but this MAC address was unknown for PC2. Okay. For PC this one. Okay. So what this PC1 will do, it will generate ARP request. It will generate ARP request. And this is the content of ARP request. Source MAC address A, destination MAC address will be all F. All F is the broadcast MAC address. Okay. Now, if I talk about the MAC address, MAC address is used to identify any endpoint physically, right? It is the physical address of any endpoint. And uh, what is the size of MAC address? Can anyone tell me? 48 bits. MAC address is 48 bits, right? Six bytes. Okay. This is the MAC address size. Now, these six bytes are broken into two parts in the MAC address, okay? Three bits are used for OUI, organizational unit identifier. These three bytes are assigned to the manufacturer, okay? So that we can identify that this MAC address belongs to Lenovo, HP, or which vendor, or Microsoft, or Cisco, okay? And these are unique bits to make the MAC address unique, okay? To make the MAC address unique. So, these three bytes will be used to identify the manufacturer details of that endpoint. And these three bytes will be used to make address, used to make the MAC address unique. Okay. These bytes are assigned by the manufacturer. Okay. You can say these bytes are used for the manufacturer, and these bits are oh, sorry, these bytes are used by the manufacturer. Okay. Like when you are going to purchase any laptop uh, that belongs to Dell. 
its laptop uh, MAC address will contain three bytes for OUI to give the information about the manufacturer and three bytes to make that MAC address unique. Okay. Globally. So MAC address will be defined in hexadecimal format. Okay. The last MAC address, see if you have this 000, 000, 000, 000. it is no MAC address. Okay. And broadcast MAC address will be all F. Whenever any broadcast will be generated at layer two, its destination MAC address will be all F. Okay, so this ARP request is a broadcast request. So when it will be generated, its destination MAC address will be all F. Okay. Here, let me write this when. Any endpoint will try to communicate with any other endpoint. It requires IP address and MAC address of the destination endpoint. If initiator does not have MAC address for destination endpoint in its ARP cache. Then it generates ARP request, address resolution protocol request. Okay. Now ARP address resolution protocol works between layer two and layer three, right? It is used to find out MAC address for a known destination IP address. ARP request is a broadcast request. Okay, so it cannot go out of its broadcast domain, right? Okay, cannot go out of its broadcast domain. Clear? So now this PC one will generate an ARP request and it will send this ARP request to switch. This is a broadcast request. Okay, now how switch will behave when it receives a broadcast request? Here when switch receives, when any switch receives ARP request, it will forward that broadcast request out of all the switch ports which are assigned in that same broadcast domain right means uh, assigned in the same vlan and on the trunk port I will tell you about trunk port later, okay? But it is the behavior of switch. When it receives any ARP request, it will send that broadcast package on out, all, out of all the interfaces assigned in that same broadcast domain or assigned in that same VLAN from where that ARP request was generated and on the trunk port. 
okay so let's say they are all in same broadcast domain for now as i told you in the beginning right so this our request will be sent to pc2 and pc3 also this one is pc1 this one is pc2 pc3 so switch will forward that our request to pc2 and pc3 both now in this our request what is the target ip 10.1.1.2 so this pc2 will accept this our request okay and pc3 will discard it because destination ip address does not belong to pc3 target ip address of this our request is 10.1.1.2 and on this pc3 ip address is 10.1.1.3 so it will discard it okay pc2 will send the reply this is arp reply okay in this arp reply this pc2 will become the source means its mac address c will be the source destination mac address will be a okay then arp header will be there then in this arp packet <coughs> sender ip address will be 10112 okay sender ip address will be 10.1.1.2 and sender mac address will be c target ip address will be 10.1.1.1 and target mac address will be a this is a unicast reply right now when switch was receiving this arp request at the same time what switch did switch created its mac address table also when the arp request by was received by the switch switch created its mac address table switch noted down this mac address a is reachable via for example it is e0 by 0 it is e0 by 1 and it is e0 by 2 a is reachable via e0 by 0 okay it was noted down when arp request was received by the switch this arp request was received by the switch okay then switch forwarded that ARP request to PC. Now this time PC is sending ARP reply. Okay. Switch will note down this MAC address again, this C. C is reachable via because it will always note down the source MAC address. E0 by 1. And it will check the destination MAC address of packet. It is A. Then it will perform lookup into MAC address table that a destination mac address is reachable via e0 by 0 so switch will forward this arp reply directly to pc1 right pc1 will get the reply and it will get the mac address also so it will take this packet out of its buffer okay and it will put destination mac address c now this icmp packet will be sent to the switch switch will check destination mac address it is going for c c is reachable via e0 by 1 it is stored in the mac address table switch will forward this packet out of e0 by 1 interface it was icmp echo request okay then this pc will send icmp echo reply if it is reachable and everything is fine it will send icmp echo reply in echo reply it will become source okay it will become destination source ip will be destination ip and destination ip will be source ip like 10.112 will be the source ip 10.111 will be the destination ip right and icmp ego reply will be sent and then it will be received by pc1 because when it will be sent to switch switch will perform mac address table lookup destination mac address would be a and a is reachable via e0 by 0 interface switch will send this E ICMP ego reply to initiator PC again and your ping will be successful. Are you getting this? Yes. This is how switch operation works. It, 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 it will create the MAC address table like this. Okay, in this manner you can see. Okay. Now I will show you these things practically also, but before going to the practical. So ARP is clear when any endpoint will try to communicate with other endpoint it requires ip address and mac address of the destination endpoint if the initiator does not have mac address of the destination endpoint in its arp cache then it generates arp request to find out the mac address of destination ip or the ip address 
address resolution protocol works between layer 2 and layer 3. It is used to find out MAC address for a known destination IP address. Our request is a broadcast request, so it cannot go out of its broadcast domain. Okay. So if the app request, let's say on switch to divide broadcast domain, you have created multiple VLAN. We will discuss about VLANs and users are assigned in different VLAN. So if any user from VLAN 10 is generating an ARP request, it will not go out of that VLAN. Okay. It will not go out of that broadcast domain. So when any switch receives ARP request, so what will be the behavior of switch when it receives any broadcast packet? When switch receives any broadcast packet, it will forward that broadcast on all the interfaces where that same broadcast domain is assigned, same VLAN is assigned, and on the trunk port. Okay. Okay, but the broadcast will not be sent back to the interface where it was received. Okay, it is not like this. It will always accept this interface. It means it will always exclude this interface. Okay, exclude this interface. It will send the broadcast on other interfaces which are the part of this same broadcast domain, but not on the interface from where it was received. Okay. Clear. Now, when you are going to access any switch, then how can you access the switch? I told you method, right? Console cable. You can say management. So let's say I have a switch in the network. It is a 24 port switch. Okay. Here we have different LAN ports. And you know that in the back panel of switch, we have a console port. We have a console port. It is also RJ45, right? With this console port, you can connect your desktop. Okay. Your desktop. And you can use any application like Putty or Secure CRT. TerraTerm was also used. Hyperterminal, right? Many applications are there. So, which application you use uh, for for your daily activities? Putty. Putty. Yeah. Or okay. uh, one of client we have Secure CRT. Secure CRT. Okay. So you can use these applications to take CLI access of network devices, right? They support LNET SSH protocols and the console access also. Okay. So let's say so, this is the switch. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So like before we start uh, this, uh, can you please show the physical switch image and explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. I will. I am just telling you about the access. I will show you. Okay. Yeah, because everyone working remotely and most of the yes, resources yes, yes. never uh, work physically. When I will show you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, yes. I will also tell you about the physical properties of your switches, like how many ports will be there in any specific model, how, will, how the console port works, how will you configure the console port and everything. Okay. okay. So for yeah. now, we have a physically available port, console port. Now, when it comes to the management, you can manage any switch or any network device locally, like router or firewall itself, or you can provide remote access, right? Remote management, local management or remote management. For local management, we use console port and console cable. Okay. For remote management, if you want to get remote access CLI, then we can use Telnet and SSH, if it's up to you. Telnet is not that much used because it is not secure, okay? And SSH is widely used, okay? So for console access, for physical access, if you are physically connected with your firewall, then you can, ex sorry, with your switch or router or firewall, all the devices can be managed via local or remote management. Okay. But we will see the management of different devices separately. So for now, here I am talking about Cisco IOS, means Cisco switch and the router, both will be included in this term. Okay. Cisco IOS. 
this is the operating system for cisco devices internetwork operating system okay so cisco ios means if i am calling cisco ios means cisco routers and switches okay both of the devices will be the part will be using cisco ios so if you want to manage cisco ios locally then you have to use console port or console cable with console cable and uh, here we have remote access management using telnet ssh okay we don't configure router and switches using their gui for firewalls we can use gui okay it is available for cisco asa and cisco firepower also we will see them so here you need to use this console one if i talk about the access when it will provide you cli i will show you how to do it physically okay we will connect a physical switch here and here you need to use a putty application you need to set <coughs> baud rate 9600 for cli access if you want to copy using if you want to copy a file using that console port then you have to increase the baud rate okay so we will see them a stop bit will be one and parity will be zero same same attribute will be used for console access i will show you the attributes that needs to be configured on the serial port they are mandatory i will show you them okay so after getting all these things you will get the cli okay in the cli we have different modes cli means command line interpreter command line interpreter okay here we have different modes so if i talk about cli modes then first of all we have user exec mode then privilege exec mode global configuration mode these are the three major modes okay okay so these modes will be available when you will take the cli access okay user exec mode privilege exec mode and global configuration mode now i will show you all the three modes differently but if I, but if i talk about user exec mode here we can run very limited show commands okay so how many types of commands we have on the cli okay so only show command only show command on the user x yes but some operational commands are also available okay yes show commands are there very few show commands are there in user exec mode not all the show commands okay very limited show commands and operational operation like enable disable exit okay log out log off reset reload renew copy mkdir these are all operational command telnet ssh ping trace route these are all operational commands and third type is configurational command okay we have three types of command show commands operational commands and configurational commands okay so at user exec mode we can con we can use limited show commands and limited operational commands here in privilege exec mode we can use all show commands and operational commands but if you want to configure anything then you can you have to go to global configuration mode okay so here all the configurational commands are supported you can run show commands as well but mainly it is due it is used for configurational commands okay now how they look here if i talk about the cli view it will be like this this one is the first mode when you will land in your cli it is called user exec mode okay user exec means cli exec is also called cli see cli exec and shell they are all same right they are all meaning is cli this is user exec mode then we have here you need to run enable command on this mode we have very limited show command access and privilege level oh, sorry show command access and operational command access if i run this enable if i want to move to privilege exec mode i have to run enable here it will show you like this so first of all you will get this mode this is called user mode okay 
on this user mode you have to run enable command for example this is switch one host name right here it will show you device host name and after this you will move into privilege exec mode it will look like this yes okay this is called a privilege mode or privilege exec mode this is the command in front of command i will define this enter sign okay now in privilege mode you can run all the show commands right all the operational commands otherwise you can move to global configuration mode if you want to configure something i will tell you about the commands okay but let me tell you about the modes first of all configure space terminal it will take you to config switch one and hash this is called global configuration mode okay this is called global configuration mode from this mode you can configure anything on cisco ios like if you want to configure host name if you want to configure vlan on routers if you want to assign ip address you want to configure access list you want to enable disable tell and you want to configure ssh or any other configuration you have to use this global configuration mode okay on global configuration mode only configurational commands will be used you can run show commands also okay but show commands are the part of privilege mode so when you will run them in global configuration mode you have to use a keyword do i will show you this thing also okay but for more leave it so this is configurational mode and here host name is defined and here you can configure anything you can run any global configuration mode command but if you type exit exit is an operational command so it will take you to switch one and this for privilege mode again you type exit it will take you to switch one and this one otherwise you can disable it okay here you can run disable command and it will take you to user mode again this one it is like this these are most see these are the most commonly used modes okay after that we have many other different mode of cli okay like first of all user mode then you will go to privilege mode then you will go to configuration mode after global configuration mode you can move to interface configuration mode you can move to routing configuration mode you can move to access list configuration mode you can move to routing route map configuration mode right so there are different modes further but these are the three most commonly used modes which will be required to take the access of your device okay so you need to know them very clearly on which mode which type of commands are available okay yeah. clear so i will show you things using cli i will take the physical switch access in our next class let me show you the switches with according to their requirement okay so you can go to cisco switch now when you are going to purchase the switch then you have to check your requirement right whether you are going to purchase the switch for a small network for campus network for access layer for distribution layer for enterprise switches or data center switches right so we have different types of switches here it will show you switches for every network we have lan access layer switch lan compact switches lan core and distribution layer switches data center switches industrial ethernet switches okay A small business switches these are the different categories according to your requirement you are going to purchase the switch now what type of requirement you can have you can have the requirement for number of hosts right how many users you want to connect with your network then features which features you require on the switch more than switching features like qos amplification okay and many other things are there like it is a lan access let's open this category okay lan access switches they will look something like this okay here we have physical switch available in our uh, institute only if you can come you can see otherwise these switches will look like this okay 24 port switch 48 port switch 
you can have more multi chassis you can say you can have multi chassis switches in which you will find more than 48 ports okay like if i open this 9200 switch open this right click this is 9200 series now in this series we have different model numbers 9200 with enhanced virtual networks okay vn then 9200 for multi gig support okay here we have 8 to 12 multi gig or up to 160 gbps stacking bandwidth right so they are really very scalable scalable switches as per the network requirement okay so it's up to you which switch you are going to use if i talk about the detailed information you can find out device portfolio and data sheet data sheet will tell you about the features of these specific products okay see here it will provide you up to 48 ports of full power over ethernet plus poe plus okay poe means when you are going to provide power and data transmission on a single ethernet interface or gigabit ethernet interface okay you can provide power as well let's say you want to connect ip phone or you are connecting access point with the switch then you can provide power to these endpoints to these devices from the switch port only you don't need to connect any external power adapter to these devices okay clear so here it will tell you that how much space you need and what type of bandwidth how many how much bandwidth it can provide you okay these are the physical properties okay thanks 24 port data this one is not poe right this one is poe 24p so these are different models which can be purchased according to the requirement 48 port data and 48 port poe okay different interfaces will be there okay different type of interfaces will be there now you can check another one like 9300 series it will provide you up to 1 tbps throughput right it was only 160 gbps so it was not that much high-end performer right but these switches will be very high-end uh, you can see will be used for data or very high-end data forwarding data transmission you can see you can use these ports here these uplinks okay let's go to the 9300 series switch benefits features and benefits and after that these are 9300 series model numbers okay here you can see 12 or 24 port this is the speed for fiber and which is the speed for multi gigabit ethernet interfaces right here also you can see 24 to 48 ports and it is for multi gig interfaces up to 10 gb per second okay modular uplink up to 40 gig okay uplink means with the interface which will be connected with your uh, uplink devices uplink routers okay so different series are available many of the model numbers are available okay according to the requirement you are going to purchase them previously we were using 37 50 35 50 also and uh, 36 50 also okay and uh, 38 50 is being used nowadays 30 38 50 is being used 2960 is being used okay this catalyst 1000 series it is also used okay you will find it connected in the network this one it is used for a small networks let's go to its product this one general purpose products right you will get it in 24 port and 48 port gigabit ethernet ports right so these ports can be used sorry these switches can be used at access layer to connect your endpoints with the network okay other than this here this is nexus switches we these nexus switches see there are there is there are different like catalyst switches are there and nexus switches are there catalyst switches will be used 
in campus network at core layer also, but they are not that much capable like Nexus switches. Okay, Nexus switches will provide you high speed data transmission. They are data center switches. Okay, at one switch board, you will get the speed up to 40 gig per second, 40 gigabit per second. So Nexus switches are highly scalable. They used in service provider network or they used in very big enterprise network as the core switch also. They used in data center network, okay? Clear. But catalyst switch, they are also highly performance. Uh, you, you can say they provide high performance, but not like you can say data center switches, okay? Uh, if I talk about the basic difference, we have a ASIC chip. I will tell you about that. In catalyst switch for a switch, we have a ASIC chip globally. But if I talk about Nexus switches, for Nexus switches, that ASIC chip, ASIC chip works for a particular interface. So it will be very high, it will provide very high speed data transmission. Okay. So different switches are available. Let me check if 3850 is there. It should be there. 3850 is also very popular. But it is not showing here. Land core and distribution. Let's open this category once. Go to products. 9600, See, these are very high end devices, right? These devices are multi chassis. Okay. These are modular devices. Okay. And up to 32 ports, 400 gig, 128, 400 gig. Okay. So, this type of multi chassis switches are also available to make your network very scalable okay but where is that switch 3550 nexus see small businesses it is being used this product is supported by cisco but will reach end of sale okay it's end of sale is announced right 3850 the cisco 9300 series switches after of a greater speed performance and security so it is going to be end of sale on, on 30th april, april right <clears throat> so you can use the 9300 series instead of using this 3850 it was very popular okay but it is not end of support still now if i talk about 3750 Or 3550, it is end of sale. You will see it is not available nowadays. Okay, but if you want to understand the concept of switches, you want to understand the features of switches. Okay, different categories of switches. This this is this, this is old model. These these devices are end of sale nowadays. Okay, these are like catalyst four five double zero six five double zero seven. 3750, 3550, 2950, they are all end of life. Okay. But if you want to understand the switch behavior, switch, uh, even say basic understanding of switch hardware also, then you can you can read about that. Okay. Because most of the switches like 3850, it was just like 3750X. Okay. So all the features are same, only the model numbers are replaced by the new model numbers, you can say, okay. And in some of the switches nowadays, you know that we are using SD-WAN, right? So in some of the high-end switches, SD-WAN integration is also available, which was not available previously, okay. 3750X, it was also used. Otherwise, you can check all these switches from this one product and services you can go to networking here you will find switches and product this was the tab where we were seeing all the switch this one right in data center you will find all nexus switches mostly okay nexus 1k 3k 5k 7k 9k products 9k 3K, this is 3550. 7K is also there. Okay. So you can see these are very heavy switches, right? These are multi multi chassis switches. Have you worked on Nexus switches before? Yes. Okay, okay. So here you will have multi slots, right? It will provide you 
more scalability in the network and high speed data transmission. They are used for very really big network like service provider, data centers, and at your core layer also you can use Nexus 3K and Nexus 7K devices. Okay. Okay. So I will show you how to take the access of Cisco Catalyst switches. In CCNA, we are going to discuss about Catalyst switches, okay? And uh, how to run some commands over the switches, then how will you take console access first of all, then we will move some, move further. Like I will show you the switch operation practically, okay? How the switch creates MAC address table, how our resolution will take place, all the things, okay? Okay, and I would suggest you just uh, open Cisco site and try to try to understand some switch attributes. Okay, like uh, how many ports are there in a specific switches, or you can say <coughs> that what type of ports are there, 10 gig or 40 gig or gigabit only, because you will find different series according to your requirement. Okay, so you need to be familiar with them, just like this. So in Cisco iOS, you will find three CLI modes. Either it is a switch or it is a router. It will show you, first of all, when you will take the console access of the device for the first time, it will ask whether you want to continue with the initial configuration wizard or not. So here you need to say no, I will show you, okay? And when the device is already configured and you are taking console access, it will land you directly to user mode access. This will be the first mode in which you will land. And at this user mode, we can run only very limited show commands and operational commands. Here we cannot configure anything. We cannot run many advanced show commands, okay? And uh, we can run only some limited operational commands and show commands. After that, on this user mode, you will run enable command to enable the CLI to get the access of privilege mode. Here on the privilege mode, we can run all the show commands and all the operational commands. Okay. And then if you want to configure anything on the switch, then you have to take the access of global configuration mode. To take the access of global configuration mode, you need to run configure space terminal from this privilege mode, okay? Then it will take you to global configuration mode. And from global configuration mode, if you want to come to privilege exec mode again, then you can run exit command, okay? If you disable this privilege mode of CLI, then it will take you to user mode again. It is like this. So I will show you these CLI modes and then we will move further. Here I will create a small topology in packet tracer so that we can see the packet simulation, okay, how they are being exchanged. So here I will connect a switch and with this switch I will connect some PCs. So here I told you that by default there is a broadcast domain on the switch and all the interfaces of these of this switch will be assigned to that broadcast domain. So let's say it is F0 by 0 means fast Ethernet zero by zero see this is interface type if i talk about interface type it can be ethernet fast ethernet and gigabit ethernet and after that whatever number you are seeing here like this zero by zero then this is interface number to uniquely identify that gigabit ethernet interface okay so the the name identifier is the combination of interface type and interface number just to uniquely identify this physical interface connected with switch Okay, and by default, all these <coughs> interfaces are assigned in same broadcast domain and that default broadcast domain is called VLAN 1. So I will not make any changes in switch, okay? We will just see how the MAC address table will be created with this command show MAC address table, okay? And we will see how these users will communicate for the first time because when these users, let's say in this VLAN one, I am using a network subnet 10110 slash 24. For example, this is PC1, PC2, and PC3. PC1 is assigned with dot one IP, 10.1.1. PC2 is 10.112, and PC3 is 10.113. MAC address for PC1 is A, for PC1, B, and for PC, three it is c 
for PC2 it is B, for PC3 it is C, MAC address of the device, okay? Now, when they will communicate, they will use this information to communicate with each other. So let me open packet tracer. Here you will see our communication and then ICMP. We will use this uh, packet tracer only for this practical. After that, I will use the lab section, lab portal. So here I will connect a switch. I think you all have used this before, right? So here we will connect a switch. Let's take this one. 2960, it is a layer 2 switch. Let's take a PC. PC1, PC2, 0, 1, M2. Then here you can connect cable. So which cable is being used? It's a straight cable. For straight, yes. Different state. For different devices. This PC and switch, they are different type of devices, right? Here you can mm -hmm. see in the cable types, this is a straight cable, right? Straight line cable, and this is a straight cable itself. Cross cable will be used to connect same devices, PC to PC, switch to switch, router to router. So here we have this small topology. Now let's see. We'll show you this type of device view. Okay, physical view. You can zoom in or zoom out. So this is a 24 port switch, layer two switch. Here we have this console port and power supply. Using this console port, we can take the CLI access physically. And here you have to go to CLI to take the console port access units. Okay, this is your switch. So we have landed on user exec mode or user mode, right? Here I can run very few show commands. See, if you type any command, initial keyword, and you press tab, then command will be full. And you can put the question mark to check possible commands, okay? So at this user mode, after show, you can see only these commands are available. Okay, so here if I want to check version, so I can run show one. It will show you that this is C29605, oh, sorry, switch, and this is operating system version, model number. Now, here we cannot run that much of command. You can run show VLAN brief to check VLAN configuration, okay? Here VLAN 1 is by default created and all these switch ports are assigned in VLAN 1. Here we have 24 port fast Ethernet and 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. These are also some VLANs created, right? These VLANs were used for their specific technologies and now we don't use them. Token ring, FDD, IT, and these things are not being used. So they are also created by default, but we don't count them because we don't use them, okay? I will tell you about VLAN and its ranges. Here, if you want to do some configuration or you want to use some other show command, you have to use enable command to enable the CLI and to take the access of privilege mode. Right now I'm taking console access, okay? And this one is privilege mode. We will see remote access CLI after some time by like using telnet and SSH. So this is your privilege mode. Here you can run other show commands also. Here you can see, uh, here we have more commands than user mode, okay? After show command, you will see, you will have many other keywords, okay? Like here you can run show CPU commands and memory commands, you can run show monitor commands, okay? So there were some commands are not available on that user mode, okay? They are available here. Other than this, if you want to run any show command, you can run here, okay? After this, if you want to configure anything, then you have to take the access of global configuration mode. So you don't need to type full command every time, okay? You can type initial keyword and you can press tab. Command will be full automatically, okay? Now we are in global configuration mode. In global configuration mode, here you can configure anything. Like for now, I am going to configure its host name. Okay. For now, I have configured its host name. 
like if I want to change the host name, I can run this command host name switch zero in global configuration mode. Okay. And you can see host name is changed. Clear. Now you can exit from here. For now, I will not change any configuration. By default, you can see all the PCs are assigned in same VLAN. Sorry. Yeah, all the endpoints or all the switch ports are assigned in same VLAN. And here PCs are connected, so all the PCs are assigned in same VLAN. Now you can run show MAC address table. MAC address table is empty. Okay. Let's configure IP addresses on these PCs. So you will click on this PC. It will open this type of box. Here you can go to desktop and then IP configuration. Here you have two options, DSCP and static. For now, I am going to configure an IP address manually. So I am using DSCP 10111 slash 24. Then PC1, desktop IP configuration. 10.1.1.2 then subnet mark PC 2 10.1.1.3 this is the subnet mask okay now they are all in same broadcast domain they will be able to communicate with each other let's clear the MAC address table because it has learned the MAC addresses right because see, whenever you will assign IP address on any endpoint, it will verify the duplicacy of IP address. Okay, it will check for the duplicacy of IP address, whether it is getting uh, an unique IP address or the same IP address is assigned on some other endpoint in the network to just to check this thing. So at that time, it generates gratuitous R or it is also called gracious R. Okay, to just to verify the duplicacy of IP address, I will show you that also. That's why this MAC address was learned on the switch. Okay, so I have cleared them. Now, if you run this command, there is no MAC address. So when now we will communicate or we will initiate the communication from the beginning, then this PC will generate our request, right? Here, if I talk about this network, this let's say this PC wants to communicate with PC3. So here we will try to use ping command. 10.1.3 right now this pc requires how uh, you can say which parameters like it requires source ip address which will be 10.1.1 source mac address a destination ip address 10.1.1.3 and its mac address is unknown right pc will perform lookup in its arp table in its local arp table if the destination or you can say if the MAC address for this destination IP address is not available in ARP table, then PC will generate ARP request, right? This is the process. Address resolution protocol. I think in last class I told you about this ARP also. Yes. Okay. ARP is used to resolve MAC address for any known destination IP address. So. This PC1 was trying to communicate with PC3. It was not aware about the MAC address of PC3, right? It was not available in its local ARP table. So it will generate ARP request to find out the MAC address for 10.1.1.3. Because without MAC address, this PC will not be able to send the traffic out of its network interface card. So when you will try to ping, this PC will send ICMP packet. That ICMP packet will be on hold. And PC will generate ARP request to find out the MAC address for this destination IP. Now, when this switch will receive this ARP request, I told you that ARP is a broadcast packet. Okay. When switch will receive this ARP request, it will forward this ARP request on all the interfaces assigned in same VLAN and on the trunk port. Okay. So this ARP request will be received by PC3 and PC2. There is no trunk port for now. We will discuss about that later. But for now, here we have PC3 and PC2. Both will receive ARP request in ARP packet. In the target IP address, it is 10.1.1.3 because ARP request is generated for this destination IP, right? So PC2 will discard this ARP request because in target IP address, it will find 10.1.1.3 and it belongs to PC1. Sorry, PC3. It belongs to PC3. 
So PC3 will accept this ARP request and it will send ARP reply. Are you getting this? Let me create the packet. First of all, when you will try to ping, ICMP request will be generated. But to send ICMP packet, this PC requires destination MAC address also. So this ICMP packet will be on hold. It will generate ARP request to find out the MAC address for 10113. This is the target IP address for ARP. This packet will be received by switch. It is a broadcast packet. So switch will forward this packet on all the interfaces where same VLAN is assigned and on the trunk port. So for now, there is no trunk port. Here it will send it to PC3 and PC2. Now PC2 will discard this because in target IP address 10113 IP address is configured or assigned. Okay, in our packet in target IP address 10113 is assigned. But this PC2 IP address is 10112. So it will discard it. After this, PC3 will also receive ARP request. It will send ARP reply. In ARP reply, it will become source. 10113 will be the sender IP address. MAC address will be C and the target IP address will be 10111 and target MAC address will be A. Now, when switch received this ARP request, switch also noted down the MAC address of PC1 in its MAC address table. This is the process. Okay. It will note down a MAC address. It is learned on F0 by 0. Okay. Then when PC3 will reply, this packet will be created. Okay. Source IP, destination IP, you can say sender IP and target IP. This is sender MAC address. This is target MAC address. This is ARP reply packet. This ARP reply packet will be sent to PC1. This packet will be received by switch. Switch will note down the source MAC address of the packet in its MAC address table. And based on destination MAC address, it will perform MAC address table lookup. In MAC address table, A is reachable via F0 by 0. So switch will send this packet out of F0 by 0 interface and it will be received by PC1. So ARP reply is received now. And this PC has also received the information about the MAC address of 10113 that its MAC address is C. Now this ICMP packet will be taken out from buffer. Okay. And this packet will be sent. Okay. When ICMP packet will be sent. Then see this ARP process is completed. MAC address is received. Now ICMP packet will be sent. So to verify the connectivity between two endpoints, we use I ICMP protocol, Internet Control Messaging Protocol. Initiator will send ICMP eco request. Eco request. This will be an unicast packet. Source IP will be 10.1.1, destination IP 10.1.1.3, source MAC address A, destination MAC address C. This packet will be received by switch. Switch will check the destination MAC address and destination MAC address is C. Switch will perform its MAC address table lookup. Okay. Okay. It is deleted, however, but I will write it again. So switch will perform lookup into its MAC address table. C is reachable via F0 by 1. This packet will be sent to PC3. Then PC3 will send eco reply, ICMP eco reply. And this ICMP eco reply will be received by switch. It is also an unicast packet. Switch will perform Based, uh, sorry, switch will perform MAC address table lookup based on destination MAC address. This time, packet will be just opposite, right? Here you can create the packet like when it is replying back, source IP will be 10113. Destination IP will be 10111. Source MAC address will be C. Destination MAC address will be A. And it is ICMP packet. Okay. And this packet will be received by switch again. And switch will perform MAC address table lookup based on destination MAC address of the packet. It is reachable via F0 by 0. It will send eco reply to PC1 and your ping is successful. Okay. Now let's go to the topology. Here we just need to verify because we don't need to make any changes. Go to simulation. I have assigned IP address. Okay. One more thing. You can go to PC and you can check its ARP table. 
no ARP entries found, right? If I run this command in my CMD of my computer, then ARP A, then it will show you many ARP entries according to your network adapters, right? Okay. But on the PC connected in our topology, there is no MAC address for now. So when PC0 will try to communicate with PC2 or PC1, it will generate ARP request, okay? Now let's go to simulation mode. This simulation. Here you will see this option. Okay. Now on this toolbar, you will find these packets. You can see this option, this closed packet and open packet. This is simple PDU, packet datagram unit, and this is complex PDU. Here you can customize this packet, but we are not going to use it. Okay. I will take a simple PDU, packet datagram unit, just to verify the reachability. I will put this packet on the source PC, which is PC1. Okay, you can see it is uh, showing here, right? And destination PC, which is PC2. Okay, it will initiate a ping process. Now you can see here two packets are created. First one is ICMP, it is showing ICMP, and this is R. See, this PC was not aware about the back address of PC2. So it has generated an ARP request. You can open this outer packet. It will show you that it is an ARP request. What is the destination MAC address of this ARP request? Can anyone tell me? Broadcast. Yes, it is all F, right? It is all F. This is source MAC address of Ethernet packet. Okay. See, this is Ethernet 2 header. When we send the packets over the Ethernet uh, network or Ethernet cabling, then Ethernet 2 header will be used. IEEE 802.3 standard. Okay. For wired network. And for wireless network, we use 802.11 standard. We will see that later. Okay. Here, frame will be created at Ethernet or uh, at data link layer. And, uh, this Ethernet header will be added. In this, you will find source MAC address, destination MAC address. Here, source MAC address belongs to the PC from where this packet was initiated. And destination MAC address is a broadcast MAC address because it is a broadcast request, okay? And type is ARP packet. It is ARP request being sent from PC0 to PC, PC0 to broadcast, right? Here you can see first step. The ARP process construct a request to the target IP address, okay? The device encapsulates the PDU into an Ethernet frame. This is our request generated because when this ICMP packet was being sent at layer two, this PC did not find any destination MAC address for 10.1.1.3, right? That's why this ICMP packet is on hold right now and our request is being sent. This packet is ready, you can send it. Here you will find these play pause buttons, okay? And capture and forward, this one. You have to use this capture and forward. Click on this, see this packet is sent, our request is received by switch. On switch, there was no MAC address table earlier, right? Now, you can check it has learned one MAC address table because our request is received. And switch will create its MAC address table by learning source MAC address from the packet and it has learned source MAC address of PC0 and it is reachable via F0 by 1. Right now this switch will forward this ARP request to PC2 and PC1 both. Click on this capture and forward. It is sent to both of the PCs but PC1 has discarded it right because PC1 is configured with 10.1.1.2 IP and this ARP request is generated for 10.1.1.3 IP. So PC1 will discard this packet and PC2 will accept this packet. Now PC2 will send ARP reply. Click on capture and forward. This ARP reply will be received by switch. Switch will note down the source MAC address in its MAC address table. Now second MAC address is noted down on F0 by 3. This packet was sent by PC2. So PC2 MAC address is learned. And now this is a unicast packet. You can check this. In the destination MAC address, you will find the MAC address of PC0. Okay. And this 7A, these are outer layer, these are inner layer. You will find this MAC address in MAC address table. You can go to switch. 
this one it is reachable via e0 by 1 right so this packet will be sent to pc0 this is our reply it is sent to pc0 now this icmp packet is ready to be sent here the R process takes out this packet from the buffer and resends it the device encapsulates the pdu into an ethernet frame okay now icmp packet is being sent you can click on capture and forward in this icmp packet destination mac address belongs to pc2 and pc2 mac address is reachable via f0 by 3 so this packet will be sent to pc2 directly like this then pc2 will send icmp eco reply message okay you can check icmp eco request is called type 8 code 0 and icmp message type here you can see in this outer layer you will find message type 0 in this inner layer means this packet was received and this packet is being sent okay so when the packet was received it was icmp eco request because here icmp message type is 8 and now when the packet is being sent from pc2 to pc0 it is icmp eco reply and icmp eco reply message type is 0 actually for icmp eco request type is 8 and code is 0 and icmp eco reply type is 0 and code is also 0 this is how we identify icmp messages okay and this is being sent it is r sorry it is icmp eco reply click on capture and forward it will be sent to switch and switch will forward this packet to pc1 directly and ping is successful here you can see it is showing the communication is successful okay you can delete this packet from here any doubt in this communication and here you can check on pc0 previously there was there was no arp entry now it will show you the binding of 10113 with its mac address this time if you create the communication again okay then our our resolution will not be performed because this time it has the mac address already right okay. any doubt okay <clears throat> if you want to verify the connectivity you can ping it directly like this mm -hmm. why it is not able to ping That's why I don't use packet. Okay, here simulation is running. Wait, wait. Go to real time. Okay, go to real time. And let's take the CLI again. Because you need to press capture and forward. It is pinging, right? If I try to ping 10.1.1.2, it is pinging. Here you can check R5 and A. It will show you R table. And on this switch also, all the MAC addresses are learned. They are learned, right? All the three PC MAC addresses. Okay, so now let's move further. 